captions. Show captions. Chat, yes, if it's uh, like webinar, we need to have the chat. Chat, it is. Some people will show up on Zoom. Some of you are joining us on YouTube and some on Facebook. So we're streaming all over the place. We're streaming on Facebook in multiple locations on YouTube. And of course, many of you can find us direct through Zoom. Yeah. So hello, welcome yeah, everybody. Sure. We are here to talk about leadership in your horse. I just have to find Catherine because she's joining us. Here we go. Yeah. Catherine, I'm promoting you to panelist. Hey Marjorie from Edmonton. <laughs> Hi. Hi Jerry. Hi, everyone. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hi Catherine. Hi. 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 <laughs> fun, fun. This should be a really fun discussion. Lots of, lots of people showing up and saying hello. So those of us joining us on Zoom and Facebook, I'm going to do my best to try to monitor comments um, through my phone. So if I'm cruising my phone. I'm not just like scrolling Twitter or X or whatever <laughs> it could be, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm actually trying to find our comments so that we can respond to all of you and team members that are here. I see that we have a couple of our team here. If you can help me out in any questions that show up, please help me out by putting it in the Q&A. That would be really helpful. Um, and we're going to dive in. So in other words, if you really want to take part in the conversation, if you got the Zoom link, if you registered in advance for this and you got the Zoom link, I recommend you join us on Zoom. Otherwise, you can watch on YouTube and Facebook. We're just not going to be able to chat quite in as much real time with you. But we're I'm going to try my best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here we go. And those joining us on the replay, welcome to YouTube. <laughs> so Catherine, hi. Hello, hello, hi, hello. both of you. Hello. Yeah. How are you? I'm pretty well, thank you. And we um Shanna and I were chatting yesterday and Thomas and uh yeah. or maybe it was Tuesday. I can't remember it was Tuesday, wasn't it? We were no, we were chatting about good. about this exact subject. So um yeah, we thought this would be yeah I think it's something which is you know, really, um, it, well, it's so much all over social media at the moment. And it's central in people's hearts central. and minds. Yeah. Mm. And it is an important aspect that we need to think about when relating to our horses. And of course, in training, but it, whether you're writing dressage or anything, this plays a big role in your interaction, your relationship, your partnership with your horse. So we wanted to talk about this today and also kind of the ethical aspect of leadership. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where our hearts are that we wanted to talk about. So we're, that's what we're, we're going to take it. We'd love to hear your um, thoughts as well. So you can put them in the chat or the Q&A. Yeah, so um, do you want to talk a little bit about <laughs> what brought this out without yes. me? Specific yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thomas Shannon and I uh, started talking about this because um, a post came up on my feed and um, this is not uncommon. And so it was of a type. And the post was of um, someone training their horse. The horse was completely freaking out and um in this particular you know really really freaking out quite a young horse a five-year-old i guess five-year-old warm blood uh, very athletic um but young very green and um the post basically was like well you know i've just had a terrible day at work and i've trained four horses and i just don't need this i just don't need this so you know i really really had to teach this horse a lesson so i you know, and as you can see, you know, part of it was sort of like, here I am with my very sticky seat riding out the biggest spook and a lot of rearing and a bit of bucking. And the other no. part was, yeah, exactly. So it was quite explosive situation. And, you know, all kudos to the person that they rode that out. But then it was like, oh, OK, yeah. So I put the draw ravens on and from now on, we're going to train in draw reins. Um, and I rode her till she was completely exhausted. Um, and then underneath this... Yeah, I showed her. And then underneath this is, and I don't want anybody to comment on this 
post, oh, maybe she's in pain, maybe the saddle doesn't fit, maybe this, maybe that, whatever. Um, yeah. None of those things are true. And I'm not, basically, I'm not interested. So you then had about 800 comments um, supporting, yes, you must put the draw reins on. One person said, oh, what we what we do in that situation is we hobble the horse. So we tie their front legs together, make them lie down in the arena so that we take away their capacity to move. And then everybody trains around them for a couple of hours. Yeah. Uh, Absolute helplessness. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who suggested anything like, well, you know, the, the person said, oh, I, I was absolutely exhausted. And someone said, oh, you know, when you're tired, sometimes these things happen. No, 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 no. So everything was shut down and nothing to defend the horse or support yeah, the yeah, yeah yeah so you know it was an interesting i thought it was an interesting uh, interesting post i thought it was interesting how she was putting this out there in quite a provocative way and then she was telling yeah. people that they couldn't respond unless it was positively and mm -hmm. it's not an exception to see this sort of thing i i, I see it quite often and i think because well, you know there's also a kind of counter group which are on every single post, criticizing every single thing, like, oh, there's a wrinkle on the right side of the, you know, the mouth, so that bit is causing pain, or there's, you know, the left eyelash is expressing some worry or whatever. So there's that extreme. <laughs> and we got interested in discussing this because I think everybody here tonight is loves their horses, yes. loves to ride and Can train. Um, yes. Yeah. But is there something in between? Right. And what would that look like? And how do you guys in the watching tonight na navigate this? And in our personal conversation, this brought mm. us to the point of leadership, because to be a good leader, mm. you want to take this situation. It's an opportunity. It's a training mm. opportunity. And instead of demeaning the horse by putting them in draw reins and sticking them there like that forever, which is mm. not fair or hobbling the horse for hours, which is not fair. You know, hobbling the horse um, brutally, actually, it sounds like, you know, not yeah. just, yeah. I've heard, there's a debate around it, but I, I guess it could be done well. I don't know, I don't do this, but I suppose, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but, which are both meant to absolutely demean the horse mm -hmm. and bring the horse into a state of absolute helplessness and vulnerability and willingness to accept their um, absolute submissiveness mm -hmm. to the person. Which I, I just have a problem with this. I have a real problem with this. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. This is not what I want. I was getting to a point and I forgot what I was going to get to. Do you know what I was going to get to? Because we were, this is what we were talking about amongst ourselves and how this actually comes down to being able to be actually, what is a good leader? Because is that leadership to just show up the horse? Hmm. Or, of course, to just go, oh my God, oh my God, you're so scared. I'm going to pet you until you feel better. This is not also being a good leader. What hmm. is being a good hmm. leader? Hmm. You know, it's somewhere in between. It's not being totally passive, it's not being totally dominating. We need to find a path of leadership mm. that actually works in collaboration with our horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I, I, you know, I don't know what you guys think, but I think that's not fixed. And so there might be a day where you might go more onto the petting side and there yeah. might be a day where you need to have a little bit more conviction in yourself because, right. you know, that conviction in yourself mm. um, is, is a type of confidence that can be transmitted to your horse. Um, and I think it's a very, very de delicate balancing act um, and one where I frequently make mistakes because I'm, you know, far less experienced than you two. And I make a lot of mistakes in this, um, but I'm getting a bit better at reading, OK, when is the time to be a little bit more clear and firm in myself and find my own kind of strong support? And when is the time to be a bit softer? That's um, just yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. about being very present to myself, mm. really being aware of my own emotional situation and the stresses in my own life and how that might be coloring my perspective and mm. honest with ourselves and honest yeah Brutally and well as having yeah and as well as having the capacity to read your horse and horses are different you know such different characters aren't they so yeah. different yeah. needs mm. 
thinking as you're talking about it, it's not that different than parenting. Actually, there are times when we err too much one way or too much yeah. the other way. The objective is not to to be fixed, but to actually find those boundaries and then mm. to stay in mm. where we want to be. What's in accordance with mm. what what resonates with us? What mm. we want to be about yeah. how to look for our children or our horses yeah. and the thing is with the horses it's not just about the horse but it's mm -hmm. also about how we want to show up for ourselves with our horse mm -hmm. so there's we're also building a relationship with ourself mm -hmm. through how we relate to the horse mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. that that's really interesting too mm -hmm. yeah and it's one of those things actually which really it, it, at the time um when i saw that post yeah. Um, I felt judgmental and angry. And then I was like, no, okay, I'm really interested in that reaction in me. Um, and I'd like to examine what it is about me that wants to judge this situation and yeah. what's happening. You know, is that, you know, is that something about kind of feeling good about myself that I can kind of look at that and go, oh, you know. Um, mm. uh, so I think it's to come back onto myself and kind of go, be a little bit more impartial almost and go, well, yes, there are people on that end and there are people on that end. And that's really interesting. And I can see what I can see why she did that in her situation. I can see why I wouldn't do it myself yeah. and, and vice versa. I can see why the person who would, you know, never, never put any boundaries on their horse at all. I, I understand, you know, the more I can kind of empathize and understand each of those situations, the more I can actually find the place I want to be myself. I think that's what I'm saying. That's... It sort of defines my area Without of, demonizing either. Yes, exactly, exactly. Abusive, you know, because I saw some comments coming through that feel that that is. And yeah. uh, to be honest, we also mm. agree. Mm. But there's an aspect to uh, our, all of us that can relate to it. Yeah. Can relate to that thinking yeah. that, damn it, horse, you know, I'm yeah. tired. I just wanted a good ride. And yeah. here you have to do all this shit, you know, excuse me. But that's how you feel at that moment. Mm. It's not fair to the horse, but mm. that's, we need to acknowledge that that is how we are feeling because then we can actually also start to take that apart. Mm. Mm. Yes. Once we acknowledge that that's how we're showing up, because maybe then we need to check ourselves mm. if we're showing up that way, you know, and, and go, okay, well, maybe I need a little bit of an mm. attitude adjustment at least that's how I would do this like oh wow I'm feeling this I'm feeling like I'm entitled to a good ride because I had a hard day yeah. you know regardless of what this horse is feeling or thinking or doing you know and that's not fair to my horse and so I need to keep myself in check with that mm -hmm. yeah and you know to also deny our you know if I deny my feelings of frustration and impatience that I sometimes have I think that's also a, a type of dishonesty to kind of go, well, I'm always patient when I'm around my horse or I'm always this. No, I have th I have that feeling sometimes, you know, and I exactly as you say, Shanna. Um, and I I find it important to kind of go, oh, that's really interesting. You know, that's this situation actually is actually pushing something out in me, which is really useful. Yeah, there's because it's about it gets, you know, means that I know more about myself and about more aspects of myself rather than I, I am always this way. I'm always kind, right. empathetic, it's fair, so just and mighty that I, I would never do that. Maybe yes. you would, but there's an aspect of you that yeah. maybe would. That you maybe know? thinks that about it. Yes, 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 yes. It may be that you could quickly go, no, no, that's wrong, mm -hmm. you know, but not everyone necessarily does that quickly mm. like this woman you know mm. <laughs> she justified and <laughs> defended it yeah, down. straight away yeah 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 more than actually more than defended it really it was like no this is the right thing to do was was i thought that was a really interesting kind of yeah. as, aspect of that post was how righteous she was actually yeah yeah yeah, lots of comments. Yeah, I think it's a hot topic, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is a hot topic. We could probably, yeah. we could need an hour for this, but we could probably talk hours about this because it's like, if this gets everyone riled up, you know, this is, and this, you know, that gets us in here mm -hmm. because for all sorts of reasons. We all have different reasons why it does. Mm -hmm. Thomas, did you want to say anything about I'm any of this? It's been us it. talking about I'm it. I'm thinking a lot about it. I mean, the one thing that, struck me is that it's it's interesting that 
most of the comments under the post agreed with her. And I thought that, that yeah. today I'm surprised, was, like 800, that, literally 800. 800, 850 or something. Yeah. yeah, but I was thinking that's her circle, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. The people that follow her are going to share the same philosophy, whereas the people that follow me, if I said that, I would be killed on the Internet. <laughs> the people that follow me do not have that philosophy. They yeah. care very in a very different way about their horses. I'm just surprised that that still exists in a, in a way, that mentality. And then the other thing, of course, is that, yeah, the, you know, this this writer, yeah, she was frustrated and she... Mm -hmm. reacted emotionally yep. but she didn't have the tools to do a better job and then I guess maybe on some level she knows and she just mm -hmm. doesn't want to hear about it and she doesn't want to address it maybe she doesn't want to you know invest that energy and time to to get more skills so she doesn't have to put the draw reins on and ride the horse until she's exhausted you know um I don't know it's it's weird it's 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 not it was a very weird thing yeah mm. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's offensive <laughs> to read what she did. Yeah. At the same time, it, it makes me wonder. It's like, why is that? Why mm. does she do that? Or, mm. yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, and actually, that's a really interesting point, because I think what often motivates humans, and all of us here, are, as far as we're aware, we're all humans. <laughs> in this room, <laughs> um, at least we can speak for ourselves. Yeah, speak for speaking for ourselves. <laughs> uh, no, I completely lost track. But um, you know, we I think most human people, <laughs> when human when humans when we when I react, it's generally because I'm on some level I might feel angry or frustrated, but underneath that is fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that underneath all that bravado or braggadocio, whatever you call it, was some fear. That, because it was actually quite a scary situation. That mare was really throwing some shapes, wasn't she? And it, it sounds like the horse does that regularly. Has done it before, yeah. Probably has done it before. So yeah. she, she lost. The rider has a good enough seat that she... Yeah. Really she can well. ride it out. Yeah, she did yeah. stick it really well. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't understand why she wouldn't investigate why the horse does that. Right? Mm. I mean, there's got to be a reason. I mean... You, Camera was so far away from the uh, yeah. three, partially covered, so you could only see a little bit. And then, you know, she came around. I think it was a circle yeah. to the right, and suddenly the horse stops and goes up and spins around. It was a pretty extreme reaction, yeah. but uh, you mm -hmm. couldn't really tell what happened. Why it looked like she was looking at something, maybe heard something there. Maybe the she ears. tried at something, but mm. she started... she definitely spooked. Yeah, she definitely had a big spook. But if, um, I mean, the situations where it's legitimate, right? Where you know there yeah. are some. I don't know, rabbit running out in front of the horse or a bird flying out or something. But if that's like a regular occurrence that the horse spooks maybe for no good reason, then mm. yeah, I wonder is that why does the horse do that? Yeah. I mean, she said she was, it sounds like she was rushed for time. Yep. She's busy. She probably okay. just got on the horse and rode. She didn't lunch the horse first. Five year old, I mean, my 10 year old horses, mm. I used to lunch every day before I ride them because I feel like it's the best warm up to give them. Mm. But a five year old, I certainly would personally mm. never get on because I feel like they need to kind of arrive it's mm. not just about getting the bucks out and all of that and warming up the body but they also need to mentally arrive mm. like we talk a about a lot about that at least that relates a lot to me that because i'm very busy too before i can go out and ride my horse i have to mentally arrive too mm. so i mean and that's another point how much is this cost because the horse wasn't mentally there how yeah. much because she wasn't mentally there you know mm. And yeah, yeah, if uh, yeah. Rough, if you feel pressure to get things done, then it never yes. goes. Yes, she's a. As far as I know, she's. Um, I don't want to say too much, but she's a. She rides a semi-professional uh, competition, so yeah. you know, and 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 in eventing, and eventing, you, yeah, you're you're having to build a relationship with your horse where your horse can be really brave, actually. Yeah, and so I, you know, while I don't agree with what she, how she approached that, I can see that kind of eventing mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're they have a little bit yeah. of get her done, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, I someone saying, oh well, you know, if she didn't, if she was wondering and didn't self reflect, she wasn't wondering. She had already decided why yeah. the horse was like that, and the horse was being, you know, a bolshie. Yeah, know. she. 
wasn't even really looking. And she wasn't reflecting and wasn't wondering at all, no. As much as yeah. maybe validation, some, but not confirmation. Yeah. She wasn't yeah. worried that she had made the wrong choice. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Don't yeah. read any comments. So many comments. I know. I, I don't have to pick a few. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, Catherine, do you want to pick any out? Um. I There's mean, a lot of people like, ah, <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do want to hold on. I have to scroll back up to that. That was one of the first ones here. That. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's so many comments. I'd like to read something about people who are saying, yeah, I've, if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I've had moments where I feel frustrated. There was a really interesting comment in the middle um, about someone who, and I only just skimmed it, um, who said, if I can find it, who said that she had got how ah uh, here, um, Marion. I'd like to read your comment out. That's right, because it's really interesting and I think very self-aware comment. He said, I found myself yesterday feeling a deep hate for my horse because he doesn't fill the space that my heart horse occupied. I was mm -hmm. shocked. Listening to all these people available on social media, I think it's a total li lie to believe it doesn't happen to everyone at some point, which is, I think, confirming what you were saying, Shanna. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, and that's kind of what I was getting at, is mm -hmm. that though my instinct was to go, uh, then I go, well, actually... Sure, I didn't act on that feeling, but I've had that feeling. And if you say that you've never had that feeling, really check check yourself. Maybe it's true. Maybe you've never had a feeling of frustration or impatience or wishing that, wishing for more or for something different or your horse was different. Mm -hmm. I, my horse is um, a very interesting, strong character. And his best friend is the most willing horse in the world. And if we could put my horse and my friend's horse together, we'd have like this perfect horse who, you know, in in terms of the humans. But we love them because of the funny characters they are. You know, I have to bargain with my horse all the time. He's like, I don't think so. And I go, OK. And she's like, she has to stop herself from asking or because he'll always say yes. 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 So thank you, Marion, for saying that, because I, yeah, I think yeah. that's just an incredibly honest thing yeah. to say. Absolutely. And I, I hope that. that it encourages everybody to kind of not be afraid of that. Sometimes we have negative feelings and we have a negative feelings around all relationships as mm -hmm. well as positive feelings. Right. I mean, this is uh, what we do with our horses is really it's mm -hmm. about relationship relationship is i mean we're training the horse and we're trying to do movements and we're trying to do all these things but the biggest part of it really is the relationship without relationship you have nothing you can't really do much of anything yeah so um, michelle it's an interesting subject for discussion i always try to remember that i chose to have the relationship with my horse but he had no choice in that that's true that's a really good point it's that's true. True. yeah good good to remind ourselves of that sometimes mm -hmm. Yeah, we choose choose to do this. We choose to you know do this with the horse. Yes. And the horse you know, doesn't have a bunch of the choice. Yeah, they're not cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cats always choose their people. Mm -hmm. If they don't like you, they just leave. <laughs> Some horses can go rogue, right, and just buck you off. Some do. Of Some do. If yeah. Otherwise, you know, most of them are too kind to do that. The horses are so amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so many comments. And Thomas finds something. So, yeah, it's like Helen, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Helen Doral says, I think we need to acknowledge that there are days when we are going to ask for less if we think it's going to be a battle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think it's better not to ride, you know, if you're not in a good mental yeah. space or you're, you're rushed mm -hmm. for time. You know, I always like to, to have a little extra time because if you feel like, well, I have like whatever, 20, 30 minutes, and if everything goes perfectly, then that's enough time. But Nothing ever goes perfectly, right? And, and if an issue comes up, you need to have time to deal with it, right? You mm -hmm. can't get off in the middle of a big train wreck or something because you, you'll provoke the train wreck if you feel like, I've got to see this through, I've got to finish with this. Yeah, that, that yeah. never works out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then you better don't do anything. Or, or if you're just watch. not in the right mental space, it's, you don't need mm -hmm. to force yourself to get on and ride. Mm -hmm. 
because it's probably not going to be a good ride. I mean, there are times when it might be that spending time with your horse is really good. I, by the way, guys, I just have to quickly run and answer the doors. I'll be right back in one minute. Sure. Sorry. Okay, we can read some comments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and Shalia says my young man is teaching me to adjust my emotional state to what we can do together. If I'm upset or distracted, it's always better to do simple things or just stick to some grooming or she will fight. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's yeah. it. And Jackie Davis says since the first aware writer course, I have found it a lot easier to notice when I'm out of sorts in some way and to then adjust my plans because I know it's unfair of me to be out of sorts but still demand my horse to cope. That's very true. Yeah, thank you for saying that. That's, That's true. true. That's true. And it's nice that it helped. Yeah. 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 yeah it's true. We can't expect a horse to do something we, we can't or don't want to, or, you know, ourselves. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> yeah. You're back. We've been talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> So Yasmin Seliga says, I think it depends on the character and mood of the horse. Some are mm. more sensitive, some less, but I would never make my horse help us. It breaks him. Yeah. It does. <clears throat> That's exactly it. Yeah. It breaks their spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think there was something before I went <clears throat> away where I ran downstairs was someone was talking about um, there's a lot of kind of myth about horses you know, underlying motive is to sort of, that they will dominate you in some way. Yeah. And that therefore you have to dominate them first before they know that they can dominate you. Right. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of that thing is like, uh, you know, if, if they learn they can do that, then they'll always do it. And I'm, I'm sure there's some truth in that, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's necessarily that if we make a mistake and our horse learns to do something, which we don't necessarily want or isn't safe. It doesn't mean we can't change that and reverse it. That's been my experience. As someone who came in, you know, more recently back into the riding world, I made a lot of mistakes where my horse learned he could do stuff around me and then I had to clear up the mess. And I'm not saying that that's ideal, but it's not true to say you can't clear up the mess. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, Siak Puches here has a good point. Perhaps we could read the horse better. Uh, we get more, if we could read the horse better, we get more understanding or improved understanding forms our feeling. Mm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I was thinking that too. I, I always try to understand what is the horse thinking, what is the horse feeling, and where is that coming from? You know, it's like mm -hmm. put yourself in the horse's shoes, <laughs> so to speak. But yeah, yeah. Try to get a sense of you know, what is his mindset, what is he thinking, what is he feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they... not easy sometimes, but you know, it's a constant learning process. It's a, it's a good exercise to do, mm -hmm. to try to ask yourself why, you know, yeah. what is my horse feeling? What, yeah. Why are they reacting yeah. this way? What are they exactly. yeah. and, to and them? That, that why is the horse doing that then, then determines what am I going to do about that or how am I going to handle it, yeah. right? Because sometimes the same surface level symptoms could be caused by completely opposite causes you know and then yeah. if you choose the wrong one you create a much bigger wreck than, mm -hmm. than you, have you lose the yeah. trust and yeah. respect of your horse rather than gaining it mm -hmm. yeah yeah and actually um thomas on on you're saying about on what you were saying about reading a horse you know we have we have more information about mm -hmm. how you know horses body language and what it means but yeah. it you know it's still very difficult you know you could and i noticed the sort of facebook thing where there's a horse who has a certain expression at a certain time and everybody jumps on and because yeah. you know we've all read started to read these books about the different expressions of the horse and what happens if the eyes are triangular or whatever it's a moment in time so yes maybe that is what the horse is expressing and maybe it's not and i think it's, it's really important not to get stuck into other fixed beliefs yeah, maybe they were better fixed beliefs than what were the fixed beliefs before but they can still become just as fixed and then you're not reading the situation as it unfolds yeah. in front of you. You're relying on on your sort of theoretical understanding and applying it generally. Mm -hmm. And it may or may not be relevant. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's important not to be too sure <clears throat> yeah. of yourself when you're judging others or, you know, because you see a tiny little snippet of something, right? Mm -hmm. And the 
the reality is so much more complex and there's this whole history and there's so many variables, you know, between the horse and the rider. It's such a complex system that it's very difficult to make a correct assessment assessment based on just, you know, a brief moment or a, mm -hmm. one photo or something. There's always more, you know, there's always lots of stuff that you, you can't yes. really see. And so you can you can take the best guess, right? But it's like yeah, it could also be wrong, you know, who knows? <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, I think this is something that's come up in um, other conversations we've had, is that you know, if most people here want to ride their horse, and I know I want to ride my horse, and Thomas and Shanna want to ride their horses, um, sometimes we do need to do things to to help them be strong enough to mm -hmm. carry our weight, because that is ethical. And maybe mm -hmm. in that moment, or that week, or that month, your horse doesn't really feel like doing something which will make them better able to carry a rider so then how do you man how do you navigate that yeah yeah i mean part of it is trying to find a way to make it so that you communicate in a way that the horse wants to do what exactly you want to yeah do. that can be tricky there mm -hmm. are times when there's a safety situation or something and you just have to to mm -hmm. make the horse do something if you're mm -hmm. like in the scenario he was talking about the other night when we were in a hot seat you know if you're on a uh, a steep path, a path with a steep brown vine and a, a cliff, you know, and the horse wants to turn around the other way, you know, you can't just say, no, 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 we're going to do it this way, mm -hmm. you know, because it's correct to do a correct turn on the haunches. No, you know, <laughs> you're going to do whatever you can to keep things safe. And that means that sometimes um, some Things fly out the window sometimes to keep mm. things, you know, mm. you weigh on the horse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it reminds me that the Chelsea Country sometimes said, well, if your horse is bolting and you're heading towards the freeway and there is uh, lots of traffic, then you do what you can to stop, even if that means you have to pull on the reins. Right. I think <laughs> I remember that was in yeah, reply to a yeah. question, should you never pull on the reins? That he said, well, there's a time and a place. Even Charles de Cuffey, you know, yeah. said there's a time and a place. There are times when you do, yeah. you know, it's, need to do that. Yeah. It's the, the, it comes back to the, the issue of the lesser evil right, that we had that in one of the Q&As. Yes. Too. Like what's, what's worse, right? Getting run over by a truck or pulling on the horse's mouth. Mm. You know, it's close yeah. call, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe just get run over by yeah. the truck. <laughs> it's an extreme example, but I, I often like extreme examples because they tend to clarify things. That's right? true. And, and then from there, you can go into the gray zones. Sometimes I like to to look at the absurd on the left and the absurd on the right, and then say yeah. some, somewhere in the middle. You know, let's let's see where you know where the, a good healthy middle ground is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and there was a comment. Um in the chat about riding on roads, you know, I ride on roads and there'll be times where I really have to just like, you know, we got to move. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, it's yeah, just how it is. Of course, I maybe I could say, well, I'm never going to ride on a road. That, that That's true. But my horse loves to go out. He loves it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, we live, um, so we have to sometimes navigate a busy road with big lorries and big trucks, which make a big noise. The traffic is um, coming in. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. About yeah, I don't want a conversation at I that want point. To no. Respond no. to my leg and my reins in my yeah. seat. Mm. No, no. Mm. So uh, that's something which came up for me, Thomas, when you said about the more extreme situations. Yeah. 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 Safety first, right? Yeah. yeah. Safety. Safety first. Yeah. But then you know, then we go to the other extreme, like with this yeah. lady. You know, here that wasn't yeah. as a safety first situation. There are many many other things she could have done. Yes. She did. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Elizabeth Wardell here picks that up basically. She says, this is a brilliant conversation. There's an aspect of our ego at play here. Yes. And definitely there's also the safety aspect. We ride on the road a lot, not in arena, so we're more vulnerable. We need to trust our horses and they trust us. The lady is probably more experienced rider right, than me. But where does horsemanship come into it? Where's the respect for the horse? Would yeah. you go right back to basics, especially with a young horse? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what appalled us. You know, <clears throat> we were just like, what about the horse? What yeah. about the horse? You know, I mean, I get it that she's tired and she yeah. just wanted a nice ride. We've all been yeah. there. I can relate to that. That doesn't mean that's yeah. fair to the horse. Yeah. And you always have to think about tomorrow. 
you know what i mean yes maybe today she dominated that horse and she got That's her right. way but what's going to happen tomorrow on the day after is the horse still going to want to work with her is this going to make the, the behavior worse you know mm -hmm. because now she really freaked the horse out and the horse is really traumatized or is this going to fix it i mean in, in a way it's a situation where you feel like okay um this shouldn't happen that we need to i don't know make a correction but Corrections should lead to, um, you know, like this sort of situation not happening anymore or happening less and less. And now, but what is the prognosis with with the way she handled it? Like she chose a certain correction. Mm. Well, is that going to work? Is it not going to work? Well, and I suspect it's not going to change anything. It's probably going to continue the way it is. May not get worse, but it certainly won't get better. How will this? <laughs> also, my big thing is how is this going to affect the relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Because for me, I don't want to just ride my horses to steer them around and, and just make them do things. I want to have a relationship with my horses. Mm -hmm. There's no point in me doing this if I can't enjoy the relationship. I love the dressage training, mm -hmm. but I also love the relationship side. That's mm -hmm. very important to me. Mm -hmm. So what kind of relationship is she instilling with her horse by doing this? And I mean, obviously, I mean, it's a moot point work she doesn't have those values you know obviously that's not as important to her as it is she has something else that's more important that's all i'm going to say um than what's important to me but what you do the actions you choose is going are going to define your how your relationship yeah. unfolds with your horse yeah yeah. By the way, um, people are asking about the clip. I'm not choosing to share it. Okay. No. Or or name the person. I don't think that's. I don't want to call her out. Okay. Useful or useful or fair. So, but yeah. The white guys are all going to go be. I'm sure there are plenty of other examples that will come along your way. Um, if, and, yeah. and I mean, at this point, shaming her directly isn't going to help her do any better with her horse. Mm -hmm. It's not. There's. We're not going to make an impact. I don't think she's open to it. Not at this point. I think she, I think she's young, isn't she? So she might change as she gets a little bit older. At least the feeling sounded very young. But really? The way she was uh, talking, you know, maybe immature. Oh, you mean how she, how she was expressing herself? Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that it just seemed like a young, relatively inexperienced person still. I'm invincible, you know. I'm, mm -hmm. you know. I know people my age yeah. that are like that too. Really? Though. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Jackie says the social media posts seem to be motivated by me oh, to tell and share. And Jackie must it. know the post. <laughs> uh, presumably get support and affirmation and by curating her feed to only be full of her followers and by That's also it. writing mm. in her post, don't even think of criticizing me. She was protecting mm. herself from criticism. Perhaps what we can learn from this is more awareness of when that's, we put ourselves out for only support rather than critique. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a really good point, and it's sort of something which I think is coming up a lot in the comments. Is that in some ways it's less about the solutions for the horse for me, and more about our own self management and ability to self regulate. You know. Yeah, I thought it was weird that she would post about that because for mm. for me something like that that would be I would it would feel like a defeat for me. I failed, mm. you know. I you know I couldn't prevent it from happening. I didn't handle it well, you know. My anger got the better of me, and so I, I would be embarrassed, you know, if that, if that had happened to me. And then why would you share that mm. just to tell people that to, for people to tell you that you're okay, you did the right thing? Mm. Right. I mean, for me, if I was going to share about that, I'd be like, I made a mistake today. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how I would start it. You know, I did this, I made this choice and it was the wrong thing to do. Mm. That That's, but that's me. That's, mm. you know. It's mm. weird. Maybe on some level she knows she was wrong, but somehow she can't admit it or she wants mm. people to, no, to tell her that she, she did the right thing. I don't think she thinks she's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think she's really very convicted of of her standpoint mm. right now. Mm. I think. Yes, yes, that's a that's an interesting observation. Because you know, if I'm going to, you know, think about what motivates people to to do the things that they do, and particularly when it comes to social media, why I'm I'm almost fascinated by what what mm. inspires people to post the things that they do. Whereas I look at them and I go, why would you put that out there? That's so interesting. You know, I'm very, I'm very much I post goats. Uh -huh. goats and cats and you know the odd the odd nice mountain 
scene because I like to ski. Yeah. But yeah, what what's the motivation? And maybe there is something in what you're saying in that, uh, you know, I don't want to kind of keep on drilling on this one person, but it it's actually applies. It's quite a common thing. I see, well, <laughs> someone, someone will be writing a post and it'll be a little bit self-righteous and a little bit in a particular way. And I think, why do they feel that way? That gets really interesting. And then I think about, you know, at the times when I feel that way and I'd like to write a self-righteous post. Yeah, absolutely. There, there is. But I stopped myself because generally in about 48 hours, I would regret it. <laughs> but I think that there's something in that, in the in the ability to pause before you react, which is very relevant to horses and our, our relationship with horses. Oh, great point. Yes. That is so much applies to writing because we have to do that all the time. We have to pause and say, you know, check yourself. Yeah, check yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth says to Catherine Thomas Shanna, what can you do when we get into situations with a horse where we are not at our best? As you say, it happens to us all. That's a really good question. If you can end it on some good note, mm -hmm. do that. If you can't mm -hmm. get off. Put the horse away. Mm -hmm. If you can get the wherewithal, yeah. the mental wherewithal to mm -hmm. interrupt yourself, mm -hmm. you're not going to get anywhere if you're in a bad mm -hmm. state of mind. You're not going to get anywhere. I've made that mistake. I know it doesn't go anywhere. If you can catch it in time, if you under, if you realize in time mm -hmm. what's happening and what road you're about to go on, then yeah, stop, get get off. And I mean, actually, even even you know if if you're par partially going down that road you see this is not going to go well and i can't really solve it it's, it's really better to get off even though like the old conventional wisdom would say well but then the horse realizes that they can do whatever and they don't have to obey and this and that but it, it turns out it's not really true i mean i grew up with that too that was very much yeah. ingrained in me i do not you know the you them think they won yeah, yeah you know? exactly yeah that that was very much, I mean, in 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah. that was very much the thinking. It took me a long time to realize that, you know, that's not really true. The horses don't really work yeah. that way. Like, yeah, I showed them, you know, I didn't turn right. They wanted to turn right and I didn't turn right. <laughs> horses aren't doing that. Yeah. They're not doing yeah. that. So, yeah. And so, I mean, I've had rides too where things were just not going going mm -hmm. well. And, and I, but I, I didn't get ambitious or you know didn't let my ego get, get in the way I just I tried to solve it as I tried to figure something out and I just couldn't figure find it and sometimes it's like okay I give up I can't find the solution today to this problem but I, mm -hmm. I didn't make a confrontation I didn't fight with the horse it's like in the past when I was younger I probably would have yeah mm -hmm. but uh but now it's like ah, it's not worth it it, no. it, doesn't, know, it, it doesn't help it doesn't make anything better the horse learns nothing it's just you know aggravates everybody you know, one other me. possibility is if you can do something that interrupts your thinking mm -hmm. enough yeah. and brings you present and out of this loop that starts happening enough that you're not mm -hmm. going to go back to that the minute you mm -hmm. like maybe a Feldenkrais mm -hmm. exercise or something that really connects you, a somatic mm -hmm. exercise that connects you to your body, mm -hmm. that grounds mm -hmm. you and changes your state of awareness, mm -hmm. that might do the trick. I haven't tried that in a situation like that. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not in a good place. I see, it's sort of like if I'm having a conversation with him and I'm just being pissy, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to remove myself from this conversation. <laughs> we can start this again later. And we're always better later. And same thing with the horse. You know, I usually just go, ah, ah, I'm not in a good state of mind. Yeah. It's just, I put the horse away. And yeah, Egon von Neindorf used to do that when, when he realized that uh, it just wasn't going well, he would put the horse away and try it again in the afternoon. Like if he was riding in the morning and had a bad, the horse had a bad day, he had a bad day, then yeah, just put the horse away, you know, and, and try again a few hours later. Um, other, I mean, one of my old teachers told me about the, these these little anecdotes from his teachers and another teacher he had. He would um, sometimes just sit there, take a break, and and smoke a cigar. You know, in the arena, just he didn't get off. He just sat there and smoke a cigar, and then he can think a little bit about the situation, what happened, and you know. And another one, well, didn't smoke, so he looked at the the cobwebs, and, and that that can be good. It's like this mm -hmm. reset. Like, so maybe even getting yeah. off and, and walking the horse around the arena a couple of times that can already it resets the horses sometimes too if you do that if you get off 
It's like turning the computer off and turning back on. <laughs> so you walk your horse around the arena a couple of times. That actually, it's weird. It makes a difference sometimes. Yeah, I used to write a stallion that he would just kind of get into this mental loop and he would just bite anything you did. And I would put him away and take him back out an hour or so later. And he was a completely different horse. Mm -hmm. yeah. As if we never had, I realized that you can't ride through that. It never got any better. So I just, you know, if he started going down that path, mm -hmm. I'm just putting you away. And it never... It's not like by putting him away that rewarded him. It didn't. It was just like. Exactly. It, it it's, it, it's interesting listening to you guys talk about your experiences over many years and then keeping an eye on the comments and everybody's great yeah. experiences yeah. and suggestions and, you know, what it means to it. I think someone was saying, well, it, this talk is supposed to be about leadership and we're, we're talking about something else. But, but actually, I think when it comes to leadership, <sighs> What we're talking about is um, having an ethical um, communication with your horse that actually considers them as a horse. So you understand them as a horse rather than, you know, mm. um, a child or this or that or something like that. You know, they're horses first. So you need to understand horses language and what they're saying. And also you need to understand yourself. Yeah. That if you don't understand yourself and how you're responding or how you're reacting and you don't have a good enough grasp of understanding how horses relate mm -hmm. to the world, you're going to have a struggle to have any sort of leadership, partnership, relationship at all, which is satisfying mm -hmm. and enjoyable for either of you. Yeah, Amanda Webster said good leadership is about good self-management and accountability. Yes, I, I think so. I, I really do think so. And, and that never ends, you know. It's never... Yeah. For me, it never ends that that re self reflection. Yeah. Yes. So you know something that that is always forgotten that um, we don't live or exist or ride in in a vacuum, but we're yeah. in a continuum of you know I don't know five hundred or a thousand years of history and mm -hmm. a certain cultural cultural setting. And if, if I, I just look at how much riding has changed, even in my lifetime, and, and you mm -hmm. think think that. Um, you know, De La Guerriniere and, and Rivinel, they lived in the age of absolutism. There was an absolute top-down hierarchy, you will do what I tell you or I kill you. You know, king to peasant, you know, rider to horse, teacher to student, and that uh, was still very much alive mm -hmm. and well when I started writing. Shows up everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from, from you know, the age of absolutism, then it, uh, the, the stewardship of dressage, move to the military which is no better it's also a, a totalitarian structure you know mm -hmm. top down and you're not allowed to ask any questions it's like you know yes sir yes ma'am mm -hmm. and uh, how high would you like me to jump you know you want me to jump off that bridge of course i will you know so that, that kind of thing and and to, today society is different you know we all you know have a very different worldview and um but we have to remember where you know dressage came from because these to the totalitarian past is still you can still feel it you can still see it that i mean that that lady you know that you were talking about mm. she's very much in that tradition of mm. you will do what i tell you or i'm going to kill you you know mm. <laughs> yeah, no mm. so um whether we like it or not that's it's still active. It's still present. It, it's uh, it's fading more and more, right? Yeah. But if you think that you know, basically, cav cavalry ended in 1945. I think the last cavalry attack was written in like 44 or 45, somewhere in Eastern Europe. But these these old cavalry officers, they then became judges and they become riding teachers, civilian riding teachers, and so on. And if you look at the the older like post-war um, you know, judges and, and, and famous trainers, how many of them had military ranks, you know? There's so many colonels and, and uh, generals and so on that, that were very highly, you know, esteemed trainers and, and, question, uh, and, and uh, judges. And um, mm -hmm. that, that influence fades very slowly. You know, mm -hmm. It's just very slowly replaced by these much more modern views of, leadership and you know whatever communication and you know relationships and so on um mm. yes yeah, so I, I think it's a you, you know it's a 
in some ways it's simple mm -hmm. to follow instructions and to follow sets of rules. And what we're talking about here is developing a flexibility of not only your thinking, but your very being, how you are as a person in the world, because horses, you know, they are somatic. In other words, they communicate through their bodies and mm -hmm. through their senses. So we, as people who work with horses or are with horses, mm -hmm. need to develop our own capacity. And humans' capacity for sensory communication is lower mm -hmm. than horses. So how can we actually build that up so that we can have this type of conversation with horses, which isn't what you're talking about, Thomas, the old way, right. you know, exactly. do or do or die, this or that. The mm. structure is very appealing, mm. but it leads to that situation where we started, where someone just enforces the rules on an animal that doesn't deserve it because the animal's just a horse being a horse. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me, that's where I am in my own process, if you like, is developing my capacity to to be a kinesthetic rider, to be a sensory, um, uh, a sensory human on the ground with my horse, to have that sort of understanding, even if it's of sort of see him within the herd, you know, how is he within the herd and how would that inform how I am with him? And that might be different. So it's an incredibly interesting process of study, but it's not, it's not the simple way. Unless someone mentioned Tom Dorrance, unless you're Tom Dorrance or one of these, you know, guys who just have this incredible gift and years and years and years and years and years of being with horses. So most of us probably aren't at Tom Dorrance's level. Yeah, most of us aren't. So, yeah, this is what where we are. We're really interested in, in this, you know, the three of us. And we are. Yeah. There's, uh, clearly, there's a lot of yeah. other people interested in this we don't want to ride in the way with this this mm -hmm. top down thing that he was talking about we all want to and i think everyone here is interested in really pursuing this collaborative relationship mm -hmm. yes with us, where um there was a nice comment in here that good leadership is when the horse is a leader as well as you are and i agree i agree um uh, leadership takes into account and it gives respect to everyone that they're that are leading leadership means you're respecting everyone that you're leading mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's that's a really yeah and it's i mean it's, it's very true that the horse trains us as much as we train the horse you know if you listen to the horse because the horse will also tell you what he needs and mm -hmm. how he yes. wants to be Yes. And how he wants you to sit, and so for if, if you really listen, then yeah. it becomes totally mutual. You know, then yeah. the other horse tells you, "Well, you screwed up here, and don't do this again." It's like, okay, I'm sorry, I'll try to sit differently. You know, and then yeah, vice versa. We tell the horse, "Well, you know, I want you to do this differently," and mm. that becomes a you know, much more of a collaboration. Mm. You know? Right. Yes, right. it's um, you know, it, uh, someone's talking about listening. Yes, listening, yeah. listening to the horse, listening to you. It's mm -hmm. this continual loop of dialogue, if you like, rather than a one person monologue telling the horse what to do, which is the older way. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. It, and, and that's that for me, that that's a real art, you know, the, the, the art of a conversation. It's, it's hard enough with other humans. You know, how often do we misunderstand each other and misinterpret? And, and mm -hmm. yes. <gasps> But then, you know, when you're working with the horse, they don't even speak, you know, yeah. you have to read their body language and interpret yeah. and interpret ours. And it, it's mm -hmm. a whole other layer. But yet it's so enriching. There's so mm -hmm. much to mm -hmm. learn about the horse, but also to mm -hmm. learn about ourselves. through. Yes. And actually, you know, Shanna, your point there, like listen to the horse's body language through your body. Well, if your body is full of tension that you are not aware of, you're right. not going to be hearing an awful lot. So. For me, it's a it, it's a kind of I feel like it's a bit of a duty to really work on my own body awareness and my own um, good organization in myself, in my capacity to move my upright posture. All those things are incredibly important because if I'm not in my own self carriage, how can I possibly expect my horse to be in self carriage? Great so, point. you know, our own, you know, work on ourself is is absolutely vital. Yes. Yeah. So. Thomas, Catherine, and I are creating a um, 
a pocket for this discussion. A pocket is a bad word. <laughs> a container. There we go. A container to continue this discussion onward mm -hmm. in a new course, a program that we have so, done before, but we're we haven't done it in two years called mm -hmm. the Aware Writer. And starting March 15th, the mm -hmm. Aware Writer begins again. We would love to have you in, join us to continue this conversation mm -hmm. in depth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give you a link to it. It includes discussions like this, but also short and long Feldenkrais lessons, Feldenkrais, um, basically Feldenreid, right? Yeah. Charlotte's Feldenreid. So yeah. these are audio lessons that you do on the horse to explore things with your mm -hmm. horse. It's a whole different way of looking at writing we're not it's not an, a course where we do lots of writing exercises mm -hmm. you know like you do shoulder in then turn right and we're not doing that this is really a course where we're really mm -hmm. um clearing away all of mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and exploring the essence of mm -hmm. what we want to do here mm -hmm. with the, yeah. with our and and that you know that's a really individual thing so you know what might be my aims and goals in my own work with my horse or my own partnership with my horse will be different to thomas and different to shanna and you everybody here will have some different ways and perspectives and that is very much part of it um the other thing we have is we have the lovely yvonne lubka yeah. who is um a German trainer, equine communicator, horse osteopath, acupuncturist, a woman of many, many skills. And she is doing some um, short mm -hmm. videos she'll contribute about horse equine communication and some of the ways that she works with horses. She's very, very gifted. She's worked with my horse and she's truly astonishing. So yes. Charlotte Zetterberg oh. and Yvonne, who are, yes. uh, I don't think they're here, able to be here tonight, but they will be on the course too. So, mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Claudia asked if it's only in English. It yeah, is. It is only in English. We do have German what? speakers who are bilingual. You have Thomas. Mm. Thomas is well, one of them. So, yeah. so you can also, as mm. we do in some of our other courses, you can always post, type your question, speak in German, mm. and they can translate it for yeah. you. It's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to. Be patient with us speaking in English. Yes. <laughs> so we would love to have you all join us. This is such an interesting conversation. There were so many comments. I didn't have time to read. No. Questions. And I mean, we could be here literally for the next three or four hours mm. and still not exhaust all of the, mm. the interesting directions this could go. And we didn't yes. get in depth into what leadership really, really means for each of yes. us. We touched on it. Um, but that's what we wanted to explore in this course. Yeah. 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 And I just wanted to say, you know, in terms of the comments, it, what I really find fascinating about these more open ended collaborative conversations is um, that it's not the three of us as so-called experts is everybody is contributing and exactly. expanding. So the conversation constantly expands. And I really, really enjoy that. So thanks so much we to everybody who came tonight. The, yes. Exactly. Yeah. We are all enriched by the conversation with all of you. You actually help um add to it with yes your it, it, it opens it up and that's always our aim when we're together just, is to open yeah. up the discussion yeah you know, all the teachers you're the students we're talking down to yeah. you this is in a way it's a collaborative learning process yeah yeah where we're learning also with you through you we're all learning together and maybe and I, Hopefully we have a little more experience, maybe not, but, but not in, not in horses, but I have the, the human working with the body yeah. experience. Yes. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we'd love to see you there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Donna, it'll be recorded. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And this was recorded too. Oh, this yeah. will be recorded. The aware rider will, everything is live. All yes. the, all the sessions are live apart from Charlotte's and Yvonne's small things and then that will be recorded and available you have it to download as is as is usual with our courses yes exactly yeah. everything is downloadable there's also a podcast with all yeah. of the yeah. exactly. you just easily just stream it to your mm. phone and consume it that way however mm. it works for you yeah there's lots of information on the link i posted the link here there's lots of information on there just go ahead and click on that if you have yeah. any questions just email yeah we're happy to answer yeah catherine 
Thomas, me, any of our team, we can oh, all answer your questions. Absolutely. See you all there, hopefully. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.